And as I said, this uh, whole slew of screens of settings, on the one hand, are a bit boring, but very important for us to set up in the beginning. Then after this, we don't have to deal with them that often. You're not going to change your admin settings that often. Let's look at a couple more of these tabs I skipped over. Let's go look at taxes. What does that old saying say? What's death and taxes that you can't get away from? So now we need to think about this as well. You have to decide what you're going to do here. Um, this is a big can of worms. I can only tell you about the experiences of our clients and such. If I've got a product, especially physical goods, I should be charging tax for it. But again, I'm not a tax professional. I cannot tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I've experienced. And so you've seen this yourself. You've bought a product online and it says you've been taxed. And you've seen that more commonly in the last two or so years, two, three years. You used to be able to buy stuff online and not get taxed. It's the Wild West. It's all digital. People don't know exactly how to manage it. Now more and more you're seeing you're being taxed like a regular store. So the default here is not to tax your products. That may be fine for you, that may not. You have to check with your financial professional to see what you want to do. Because you're going to be creating an online store, you're going to be having uh, you know income all income is taxed in the US technically there's various thresholds and such again I'm not a professional in all of that you have to ask people you have to educate yourself and so you may or may not need this but I'm gonna assume I will set this up let's try this then turn on taxes right there and then click at the bottom save changes you have to save those changes before you see every feature. <coughs> so under taxes, I turned, I say, yes, enable the tax. Turn that on, save that, and now you get these other boxes down here that were not available a moment ago, which I'll explain in a moment. But right here now, what we're about to do is start to charge tax for our products. And we have various decisions to make. Product prices. Product prices are tax exclusive, Product prices are tax inclusive. So if I'm selling something for $5, that's basically then saying $5 plus tax, or $5 and tax is included. You have to decide which of those two you want. Add tax to the price at checkout, or during checkout, the total price doesn't increase, but the tax is shown as a line item. So that particular item already has the tax built into it. You have to decide which of those you want. Usually, you're going to do tax exclusive. This costs $10 plus tax. And, t and that plus tax we will figure out right here. So whatever you want, but I'm going to leave that one exclusive. Product-specific tax. Add per tax to tax percentage if product has a specific tax rate. Replace tax percentage with product's specific tax rate. Um, so is this one you need to decide, are you going to <coughs> specify the tax for individual items, or are they all going to sort of inherit the same tax? Some items might be taxed higher. Again, you have to decide what to do about that. I'm going to leave the default, because um, the default will allow me, if I want to, set a tax rate for each individual item. I don't believe that's very common, and in the clients that I've worked with that we haven't had to do that, they're all taxed the same amount. But if you need to or want to do that individually, you can. How are we applying our tax logic? We've got a bunch of options here. There's a big number one, number two, number three, and then sub items. The default is apply tax when billing region is the same as tax rate. We're going to set a tax rate. And you might know that here in San Diego area, our general tax rate is 8%. In some areas, the tax is a little higher. Uh, down in National City, their tax rate is 9%. So if I'm going to go buy something at Target, and I go to the East Lake Target, it'll be 8%. But if I go to the National City Target, it's 9%. 
So it's more expensive to shop in National City. Here we're, we're going to be able to create all of these rules and logic and when does this tax apply and all of that. And it's saying by default, if I'm setting myself for a California tax and the person that I'm billing is also in California, apply this tax. If I'm in California and they're in Rhode Island, my California tax won't apply to them. But this is still a big sticky situation because some states require a merchant to charge a buyer local tax. So I'm in Rhode Island, I'm selling from Rhode Island, and if they're in Rhode Island, I need to charge them Rhode Island tax. Some other states say you can only charge tax from, I mean, you cannot charge tax from someone outside of the state. So I'm in Rhode, uh, I'm in Rhode Island, let's say I'm in Vermont, and uh, someone is buying in California. And Vermont says you cannot charge people in other states tax. So then I can't collect tax in Vermont. I don't know, I'm making this up. But these are <coughs> possibilities. And some states like California actually are both. They will charge you if you're in California sales tax, and they will charge you if you're outside California sales tax. So this is a big complicated topic. The default here will probably work for most people. Charge California tax if I'm in Cal if they're from California. Don't charge them if they're in Louisiana. I've got instead apply tax when shipping region is the same. They might buy in California and get their item shipped to California, so I'll charge them. They may buy in Delaware and get their item shipped to California, so I'll charge California tax. Yes. Yes, the, um, this can obviously get very complex. Off the top of my head, I don't have any at the moment because the clients that I have have a very simple structure. But we can look up WP e-commerce um, tax plugins and then find a good one. We've also got the option apply tax when billing and shipping is the same, specifically apply it to the billing, to the shipping. This can get pretty complex. Uh, someone on a previous class uh, had an opinion about this. Question? Yeah, I just wanted to ask if you can't ask uh, an additional tax from other places, you mm -hmm. said it's and um, we still have to pay money, all the good money we're earning, yeah. right? So do you need to calculate that instead into the product price? What we're asking, is that the way to go? That's another big topic that is best asked to a tax professional. But that's one way because you are going to be taxed. But it's, it's sort of like chasing a moving target. I'm going to sell something for $20, and I'm going to get taxed at my tax bracket, 20%, whatever. So I'm going to build in 20% to it. So I'm going to charge, okay, $25 for that item. But actually, I'm still going to be charged 25% on the $25, not on the original $20. So it's like I can never catch up to make up for the amount I'm going to get taxed. Uh, people make that mistake saying, oh, I'll just add on top of it 3%. Well, you're going to be charged on top of the 3%. You're 20%, not, so it's complicated. So what I would say is, um, someone mentioned previously, the California Board of Equalization, big mm -hmm. fancy name for this whole topic. This is the public agency charged with tax administration and fee collection. I can go there. Someone previously said, yeah, there's a phone number you can call, stuff you can look up, advice you can get to figure all of this out because it's complicated. I'm not a professional on this. The clients that I've dealt with, they've done it very basically. California tax, that's it. Um, they have meetings, uh, seminars and things mm -hmm. per year. Per very year. cool. But yeah. So many factors, their own education, their own experiences. It, the, the rules are the rules, but everyone interprets them in a slightly different way, perhaps. So basically look that up or go to the address boe.ca.gov, board of equalization.ca.gov, and um, get more education there on your own. I'm going to say this is just going to be the simplest thing here and we, we see that we have some control of it. But look at that on your own. 
And what I mean is then we've got a whole section here, tax rates. Here's the most easiest thing. For all markets, everywhere that I sell my product to, worldwide, everyone will be charged 8%. That will fix the issue about I don't know what some places charge. I know what some places charge. For some, you're overcharging a lot. For some, you're undercharging a lot. This is one size fits all. It may be too much. Okay, what if instead I do select the USA market, and then we have, okay, all across the US, we'll do 7%. Well, now you're overcharging Delaware, and now you're undercharging Texas, and now you're overcharging Chula Vista, and undercharging National City, etc. Well, you can add multiple rules here. You can keep adding rules here. I'm going to say, specifically then, California. 8% California. Add another rule, and now I'll say for Delaware, 2%. Yeah, I have to figure this all out for the 50 states and territories and such? It's complicated. So you might just want to set all markets for one price, have it all work out, hopefully talk to your tax professional, see what's going to be most valuable. Check out the COE, the California, the Board of Equalization, right? Board of Equaliz Equalization. Um, check with them and see what they recommend and get advice and such. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say throughout the U.S. will be one value, which, yeah, it's overtaxing some and undertaxing others. 5%. Yeah, worst case scenario, you, you get audited. No, worst case scenario, you, you have to pay the difference, but worst, worst case scenario is you get audited. Um, again, are you sure you want to be Amazon? Amazon's got a whole, a whole team of lawyers and uh, tax professionals handling all of this and putting their money in offshore bank accounts and such. I can't talk about that. You can figure it out. You can figure it out on your own. Tax bans. This is more logic to specify uh, going into individual products and such. This is also very cool, kind of pretty powerful, because what we can do here, we can give this a name and then again target a market and add a percentage. So the, this is going to be if I want to add a specific tax to a specific product. So let's say um, I've got a band called Kids Toys. And that's going to be targeting USA, all markets on USA, and these, any of these kids' toys are, are going to be down at 3% tax. Later on, when I, when I create my kids' toys products, then I can attach this tax band to that product. Right now, it's not really necessary, it doesn't make much sense, but I can attach a certain percentage of tax to certain products. This is like all products, this is individual products. I can make as many of those as I want. Save. That's what that's saying. Tax bands are tax rules you can create to apply on per product basis. You go to the product, you add the band. If you've added tax exclusive, then it won't apply. We've got tax exclusive up here. So in our case anyway, these won't apply. You have to have tax inclusive. It'll be that the product costs $7 because it's also getting the percentage of a base price. If it sounds kind of complicated, here's your easy solution. <laughs> and then you'll have to deal with that issue later during tax time, your 1099s and all of that. Uh, so it's really hard to, to teach this. I can just kind of guide you and you have to further educate yourself. I'm going to turn that on just to see what it looks like when we actually have products and such that you need to consult. Save that. Any questions on this screen? Can we take the right back to the, uh, the uh, item number? Hey, what? When you have two toys as a band, wouldn't it actually be an item number? You can do it how you want. You can put in actual product numbers, you know, SKU numbers and such, or words, uh, because it'll just show you a list. Which would you like to select? So if you've got it as a number, I might not remember what the number is to attach it to the product. 
Let's look at another equally fascinating and confusing aspect of this, shipping. This will only matter if you are shipping physical products. If you're selling MP3s or PowerPoints or pictures, you know, JPEGs and such, this won't matter. You're not shipping anything. It goes through the internet. So you would turn that off. But if this is a real product that you're shipping throughout the US or the world, then you do want to activate this. Shipping Origin City. The name of the city where you fulfill and ship your orders. This uh, will help then people get an accurate pr uh, value for what it's going to cost them to get their item from California over to Kalamazoo. So I'm going to put in San Diego and the zip code, whatever, 92123. So if I am creating handmade, well, I've got this bakery, so I'm making cupcakes and I'm making cake pops and I'm making cookies and I'm shipping them throughout the U.S. And I'm shipping them from directly from our kitchen out through the U.S. I have to have that inventory. I have to have that maybe bake them at that moment and then ship them. What if, I, if I've got other products? I hand make some things and then I ship them out through the world. So I need an inventory. I put them in my garage. That's, I've got an inventory and I then fulfill it by sending the items. Shipwire is a service that is not free that you can load up warehouses throughout the US or the region and then your product will ship to people cheaper. If you've got all your products in your garage and you're gonna ship them all over the US, it costs more to ship from here to Vermont, the far reaches of Vermont and Maine. Uh, if you've got Shipwire set up, they can ship it from their New York office, so it's a lot cheaper. But this whole Shipwire thing is not free. This can be hundreds of dollars because it's, it's warehouse space for you to have your product. So it may be worth it, it may not. For most of you, probably not. It's going to be way too expensive to have fulfillment centers throughout the U.S. to send off your product. But you can look into that and see if it's useful to you. Yeah, the only problem, the only problem is that this is the one that is directly integrated at the moment. They probably have some sort of deal for for a little bit of a commission and such. We saw this when the iPhone would come out. They had to locate all the different FedEx boxes at twelve Yeah. Exactly, that's advanced stuff, having fulfillment centers to uh, get your product out rapidly. Do you want to enable free shipping discounts? If you turn that on, then you will say, well, if your price, if you've bought, you know, $20 worth of stuff, then shipping is free. Amazon's done this forever. If you haven't noticed, Amazon has raised their price for that. I believe it used to be like $30 or $35, and now it's, I think it's gone up to $39, something like that. I think they made it higher now. I'm not rich, so I'm not talking about Prime. But um, the thing is that, uh, yeah, these prices, they if you get to a certain level and you buy more than that, shipping is free. $50 worth of cupcakes, free shipping. Save that. Oops, so I'm going to enable shipping. Further on this screen, you've got then shipping modules and shipping calculators. You've got these ones built in USPS, so the plain old post office, and UPS, so private company. Uh, if you jump down here first to the shipping calculators, let's say USPS, if I go to settings, you would need to go to US, USPS.com, create an account, fill this in, and what you will then be able to do is allow people to select first class shipping or priority express, media mail, etc. This requires some setup that we don't have time to get to. But you can go off to USPS website or in person, set up an appointment. Um, and then this way you you can use 
the post office to send your items. The cool thing about it, you know, the post office gets a really bad rap, but it is a very useful thing. It's, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a nationwide thing. It's available, and you can set it up that you're going to ship products, and you don't have to go to the post office. You can set it up on the website for them to pick it up. They'll come and pick it up right from your doorstep. You can print postage right from your home computer. They've made it a lot easier to be in a home business. They saw the writing on the wall that this internet thing is not going to go away, and so they decided to you know, really get high tech. And if you go there and register, you'll be able to ship products, keep an inventory, send invoices. It's pretty advanced. UPS is also available. They're a private company. Um, whatever it is you're going to need to use is there. Notice there's no FedEx or DHL or DLH, whatever. There's, there isn't these other ones. If you want to ship through those other ones, that's the gold cart where you pay that extra $99, you get more features. For most of us, UPS or USPS will work fine. You need to research this on your own. And from what I understand, um, if you've got a UPS, USPS account, for example, and the more you use it, they see that, okay, you're a, you're a viable entrepreneur and you start to get discounts. You start to get discounts for using the system more. The, the post office. UPS too, I'm sure. They all have incentives for you to use them. Um, so I didn't, I'm not really going to set anything there, but that's optional if you do want more integration on tracking and such, and pickups and deliveries and such, you can set that up. I will back up now to uh, the actual shipping modules. We have flat rate, table rate, weight rate. I'm going to ship these cupcakes. They are actual physical things that weigh that I need to ship off, and I need to put them in a special box so they don't get smushed. So I need to decide, how am I going to pay for that, to ship it to people? Am I going to build it into the price of things, or am I going to add it on top of what they've bought based on various factors? Again, this is another one that can get complicated. The easiest one is flat rate, depending on your product. You can get free boxes from the post office in a variety of size, sizes, and they have a motto. If it fits, it ships. So you get these boxes, and if you can put your stuff in there and it fits, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go to the post office. The boxes themselves are free. You walk into the post office, you walk out with them, free. You can get them from the website, order a bunch of them. What costs, of course, is the shipping, the actual postage. You can do all those calculations on the website, set up the accounts, and you're off and running. It can be complicated, uh, so here you can set if I'm going to ship anywhere in the continental US, it's going to be a flat rate of $5. So for some things, that'll be overcharging, and for some things, undercharging. Not counting Hawaii and Alaska. So, okay, 5 for the continental, and then 7 for Hawaii and Alaska. I'm also going to ship anywhere in North America, Canada, Mexico, Guatemala, etc. So I'm going to put that $10. I'm just making up values here. Shipping to South America, Asia, Europe, Africa, add some flat values. For some, that might be overcharging, some undercharging. So instead of flat rates, we have table rate and weight rate. Table rate would be useful based on the price of the items. If something is Uh, $25 and up, then the shipping for that will be um, $2. Up to $10, the shipping will be $5. And if they're buying just you know a little $5 thing, then I gotta recuperate my my expenses, so $6 shipping. Whatever will make sense for you, I just made up some values. That's the point of this. $25 and above, cheaper than simply buying one-off things. That's also a way to entice people to buy more. There's a whole art and science of selling, and one of them that works all the time. You can think about it on your own. You see a coupon that says 20% off. So, great, I'm going to go buy something, but I'm going to buy a little bit more because I'm saving 20%. You might see, buy one, get the next one, half off. Okay, I've got to buy at least one. 
and I'm convinced to buy it. So I bought one and I got another, 50% off. These sorts of in in incentives really work for people. So as if they see that you buy a little bit more, you know, $5, if I'm only going to spend $5, I'm going to get charged 6 Well, if I want to save a little bit, it might be too little, but if I want to save a little, just spend a little bit more and I'll save more on shipping. So you can think about how yourself you, you've done that. And then weight rate is related to weight. This again is also related. If it weighs this much, it's going to cost that much. This one probably you'll do it the opposite because if it weighs at least one pound, it's only going to be two dollars shipping. But if then it starts to get above five pounds, I've got to pay five dollars for that. And then when I'm selling these cakes that are, you know, ten pound cakes, do cakes weigh ten pounds? Um, then I'm going to put seven dollars because it's going to cost you more to ship it out to people. And you can activate all of these and get pretty complex. So this is the screen where you'll need to figure out what you need to do about it. Uh, it really depends on your product. You want to enable that, add some shipping methods, and, s and save. And then the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. We've looked at our various settings, who's our admin, T's and C's, shipping, taxing, inventory and such. When we come back next time, we'll talk about actually creating products. If you, I encourage you to do this at home to get practice. Notice my handout does you know, further mention other things for you to look at. And so we'll start to add products and such next time. Any general questions on anything today? I want you to try on your own to make a backup of the site, like we've been doing over and over on the last few weeks. Go through a duplicator to make a backup of the site. Uh, and that's it for the moment. If you need any help, call me over. We, need, we close up at 4. And uh, we'll see you next time.